You're listening to the Music Tech Teacher Podcast, episode number 46. Welcome to the Music Tech Teacher Podcast. Music tech tips, lesson ideas, advice, news and interviews, especially for music teachers. Brought to you by midnightmusic.com.au. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Music Tech Teacher Podcast. I'm Katie Wardrobe, a music technology education trainer, speaker and consultant from midnightmusic.com.au where I help music teachers use technology effectively in music education. Today I wanted to talk about how you can capture students' musical creativity and share that with your school community by creating some kind of interactive display. So much of what we do with music students, of course, involves, not surprisingly, audio and video. And audio and video work so well in music because you can capture student performances and compositions and other creative projects. Now, examples might include a recording from a software program, so where students have done some songwriting or a performance of some sort. It could be an audio version of a notation file, so if the students have um, created some kind of score, they can of course turn that into an audio file once they're done. It could also be audio and or video recordings of informal student performances in class time or also video recordings of public performances that they've done as well. It's really nice to display photos from performances or maybe even a copy of a score that a student's produced or even an image that represents a composition that they've worked on. But the missing piece with those displays is the ability to hear the composition or hear and see the student performance. So I wanted to share in the next couple of episodes, I'm going to share two ways that you can actually make interactive wall displays that will allow parents and teachers and other students to see and hear your students in action. So it's a great way to show off what you're doing in class with your students and of course what your students are doing. In this episode, I'll share the first way that I'm thinking of and in The next episode, episode 47, I'll share the second method for creating this interactive display. As usual, you can find all the links to the things that we talk about on the show notes page for this episode at midnightmusic.com.au forward slash 46. The first way you can create an interactive display is to use QR codes. Now, QR codes have been around a long time and you are probably familiar with them even if you're not uh, quite sure when I mention what they are. It's basically like a square-shaped scannable code, kind of like a barcode, but it's not a barcode. It doesn't have stripes along it. It has kind of like a pattern code in a square shape usually. You can scan these with a smartphone or an iPad and a QR code basically takes your device, so whatever you've scanned it with, it takes your device somewhere online and that might be a website or a YouTube video or a Google Maps location or even to a file that you've linked to that's in Dropbox or Google Drive and there are lots of other examples of the ways you can use QR codes. So you you can think of it as a quick way to link to something that's online and it saves the person who wants to view this file or location, it saves them actually typing in a web address. They can just open up a QR code scanning app, which is free. They can scan the code with their device and then it takes their device straight to the URL that's linked within the QR code. So how can QR codes help with your interactive display for student work? If you can imagine perhaps walking up to a wall display, might be one that's outside your classroom or something that's inside your classroom even, and it might show some scores that students have of songs that they've written. Now you could put a QR code next to each of the scores and a parent might come along or another student and they can scan that code that's next to the child's score and their device will be taken to a recording of the student singing their song. So the key here is that the recording of the student singing is a file, an mp3 file, that lives online somewhere. Another example might be that students create uh, perhaps a 12-bar blues piece in something like GarageBand on the iPad. 
they could take a screenshot of the GarageBand screen just so that you've got something visual to put on your wall and they can print that out for display. And then once again, you can put a QR code on the picture or next to the picture. And when that QR code is scanned, it takes the person who's looking at the picture straight to the garage band recording of the blues piece. So it doesn't even need to be an audio recording of a student. It could be a recording that's produced by an app like GarageBand. Now you might be thinking, how does this work and how can I make it happen in my classroom? It's actually not that hard. I'm going to talk through some basic steps. I'll link to more detailed instructions. It's kind of hard to describe them in this audio format that the podcast is, but I'll talk through the process because it really is not very hard. So to make your QR code and to link it to something, basically you need to have the content first. So the content is the video or audio file or whatever it is that the student's performing in, the student work, and you need to put that somewhere online. Now, there's a few different options for putting it online, and this could be that you upload it to somewhere. If it's a video, you could upload to YouTube, of course. You can make it private if you need to do that for your school privacy policy. If it's an audio file, just say a student singing, you could just put it simply into a Dropbox folder or into Google Drive, and then I'm sure you're familiar with the fact that you can grab a link to that file that's within Google Drive or Dropbox. So that's the first step. You basically take the, the content and you put it online somewhere. You grab the link that is uh, for that content. So you grab the link to the file. You go to a website where you can produce QR codes. And the one I've been using is called QR Stuff. And this is an easy website to follow. Basically, there's kind of like uh, there's four or five steps. You find the thing, you identify the thing it is that you're linking to. So If it was something in Dropbox, you can click a thing which says it's a Dropbox file. If it's a YouTube video, you can click it's a YouTube video. And then it will give you a box to paste the link in that you've already copied. So you'll paste that in. And then magically on the right-hand side of the screen, a QR code appears. And that's a unique QR code which goes to the thing that you've just linked to. So that's all you need to do. You put your content somewhere online. You copy the link to it. You paste the link into the QR Stuff website and the QR code is generated. Now, the last piece of the puzzle is that you need to download that QR code. And when you do that, it's just an image file. It's a .png file. You can download it to your, it'll basically go to your downloads folder. And my advice is to rename it straight away because it will be given a file name with a string of numbers or something really generic and unidentifiable. So my advice is to name it straight away with whatever it is that you're linking to. So if you had a class of students and you generated a QR code, which goes to one of your students' work and her name's Mary, I would name that file that you've just downloaded Mary's Song or something like that, maybe with the year name in there as well, her her grade or class. Now, once you've downloaded it and renamed it, you can do whatever you would normally do with an image. So you could add that image to a worksheet. You could add it to a PowerPoint document. You could add it to a Word document. You could just straight out print it. You don't even need to add it to something else. You could just print it from there. Or you can even put it into a score. So I've done this with um, Sibelius. I often use Sibelius for notation files. And I can create a Sibelius score and drag a QR code into my Sibelius score and then print out the score and it's got the QR code there. So that's how easy it is. There's really only um, a few steps. And once your QR code is printed out, then it's ready to be scanned by anyone with some kind of smart device. Now, students can even generate these codes. So if you were wanting to display an entire class worth of stuff on your wall, you could actually get students to generate the codes. And it's not hard. So if they were, for instance, putting them into Google Drive, you could get them to right-click on that file or yeah, right-click, I think, and choose the link, choose to copy the link to that file. They can go to QR stuff, generate the code and print it out themselves. Obviously, that's going to work better if you've got students that are a bit more capable. So if you're working with really young students, you might need to do it for them. Now, this is a fabulous way, of course, to share student work like we're talking about in an interactive display. Um, There are some other uses of QR codes which I've seen. And 
many, many different ones, and it just makes it easier to get a device somewhere online. So lots of teachers I know use QR codes just to get to a, a web address which has a long it has a long URL. So for instance, if you were working with a group of students and you wanted them to go to perhaps a Dropbox folder where you kept some files that you need them to use in class time, or it might be a Google Drive folder. And I've actually done this in workshops with teachers. If I need teachers to go to a particular Google Drive folder that I have, and I've got some things in there that we're going to use during the workshop, it's really painful for me to put up the web address for that Google Drive folder because if you're familiar with those folders, they have really long web addresses and they're very complex. So it'll be something like docs.google.com forward slash document forward slash and then a whole string of lump numbers and letters. So creating a QR code which goes to this particular location means that I don't need all the people in my workshop to type in a web address which always has the possibility to go wrong and you can imagine that if you've got a big group of people all trying to type in a web address that's complex of course everyone's going to have issues with that so having a QR code is really good you can just put the QR code up I often put it up on my PowerPoint display or keynote display and people can just scan the code with their phone or with their iPad and it takes them straight to the web page to the assets that we need for this workshop. So for students, again, you can take them to a place where there, there might be files that you need them to use in class time. Now, other things I've suggested is if you're working with a student and maybe you're teaching them how to play something and they're having a few problems with one particular section of the piece, you know, if you were in class time with the student or in a lesson, a private lesson perhaps, or even in an orchestral um, rehearsal, something like that, as a teacher, you might uh, give them some techniques to use to overcome the hurdles of playing that difficult section. So you might suggest that they repeat just a couple of bars over and over or slow it down, or you might give them an idea of how to tackle the rhythm in a good way that's going to help them. Now, if they were struggling with a particular section of a piece, one thing you can do with QR codes is for you to create a really quick video teaching them how to do this difficult part you could then put the video into Dropbox or Google Drive and stick a QR code into their score, even above the bar where it's the hard part, and the QR code links to the video that you've made them. So it's a great way to sort of extend your teaching reach out of class time. This episode of the Music Tech Teacher podcast is brought to you by the Midnight Music Community. The Midnight Music Community is an online space for music teachers who'd like help using technology in their music lessons. There are online courses, video tutorials, lesson plans, music tech news, and professional development certificates are provided for any training that you undertake. I'm inside the community every day, personally answering members' questions and sharing tips and ideas. The best thing is that you get to connect with hundreds of other music teachers just like you and share your own experiences and occasional music tech frustrations. For more information and a special joining price just for the listeners of this podcast, visit midnightmusic.com.au forward slash podcast offer. That's midnightmusic.com.au forward slash podcast offer. Another thing I've done is create a QR code quest and this was a lot of fun. I did this a few years ago as an example of how you can use QR codes. Now, if you're a member of my Midnight Music community, you'll actually have instructions and access on how to create your own QR code quest. And I've got a couple of examples that you can download for your own use. So the example that I did was a 12 bar blues QR code quest. And essentially, I printed out large QR codes on individual pieces of paper. And above each QR code, there would be a question or something to discover about the blues. So an example was uh, in the YouTube video that's linked to this QR code, 
can you identify three or four instruments that are playing, whether they're seen or just heard in the video? So for that QR code, I basically found a video online and it was someone really well known. I can't remember who off the top of my head, but um, it might have been BB King, I think, linked to a video that featured a, a live band. And in that video, you could see some of the instruments that were playing. You could also hear some other ones, which you didn't see on the screen, and then I had people go around and basically scan the QR code, watch the video and answer that question. Now, that was heaps of fun. I had a whole series of questions about maybe, I want to say maybe 10 or 12 questions in total. I pinned them up around the room and I divided the, the workshop group up into small groups. So they were in pairs or maybe th groups of three. And what they did was take around at least one iPad with them in the group. And they had to go around to each of those QR codes and answer each of the questions that had, uh, you know, the, the information on the QR code there. So one of the other questions involved, um, I think the question that I phrased was, this location is a very famous uh, place for the birth of the blues. And basically that QR code actually linked to a Google Maps location. And so it was Memphis. And so when, when you scan that QR code, it would take you to the Google Maps location. You had to kind of look and see where you were. And then that was the answer to the question. So that was lots of fun. It was a bit, you know, like a, it, it was good because I think it got people up out of their seats and walking around. And I designed the, the quiz question questions so that it didn't matter which order they were answered in because I knew that if I had 25 or 30 people in my workshop it was going to be silly if they had to do them in a very specific order and go from question one to question two and it, there would be a bottleneck of people all crowding around this one QR code that was stuck to the wall so I designed the question so it didn't matter which order they were answered in and people just went off and went to each of the questions in their own time. Another one that I've done along the same lines is a who am I quiz. And so this one was a series of questions around a particular artist or band. And I chose the Australian um, singer slash composer Gautier and because it was around the time of his single Somebody That I Used To Know, which was really massive at the time. So I had a whole series of questions around who am I and it said things like, you know, I was born at this time and they'd scan the QR code and it took them to a place where it said the birth, um, his birth date. There was questions about, you know, um, songs or compositions that he'd written or things that he'd done which were unique in his compositions. He uses quite unusual instruments and sampling techniques. So I linked to some YouTube videos. I had a link to a Wikipedia article. I had a link to an article about um, the fact that he used this um, basically like a fence. It's like a sound fence, which is in Outback Australia. And he used that in one of his compositions. So all of those things led up to people discovering that um, who the artist was that they were trying to learn about. So it was a great way to introduce a history type topic, which, you know, may in other times be a little bit dry. And it was a great way to just introduce that, get people moving around the room and lots of fun. Another idea is to use QR codes um, to put audio information, essentially, around your school. So what you can do is have a QR code perhaps stuck next to, if you've got a building which has you know, been around a long time at your school and perhaps there's some history associated with that building, you could have a QR code stuck somewhere near or on that building and students could record information about that. So when visitors come to the school or even other students at the school who may be younger or newer, they can scan the QR code and hear the students talking about that building. I've seen some people do audio tours in this way. So you can have a series of QR codes put around in many different locations and people can go around and scan them and take, they get taken on like an audio tour. Another really simple way of using QR codes is to create a word wall in your classroom. So if you're teaching students words that are not so familiar with them and you're learning definitions or perhaps pronunciation of words, then you could put the word, write the word out and stick that on the wall and have a QR code next to it where either students or you as the teacher have recorded what that word sounds like and maybe even what it means, what the definition is as well. 
So that's QR codes. I've been using them a lot on and off over the years. And um, one way that I use them, well, the most frequent way that I use them is in presentations. I'll put a QR code into my slides, my presentation slides, and it's for people watching the presentation or the workshop to scan so that they get taken to the page on my website where I've got notes to download for that workshop. So it might be a list of apps that I'm talking about or uh, maybe some a tutorial or steps of things that I'm going through that day. And having a QR code, once again, e even if I give them a simple website address to type in to get those notes or download the list of apps, there's always people in the workshop who have a bit of trouble with that and it takes quite a long time. It kind of wrecks the flow of the presentation. So it's much easier to have a QR code, um, scannable uh, QR code there. You just display it as usual on the data projector and people can just lift up their devices and scan it that way. So lots of fun, really useful. Now, QR code training, I'm actually developing a new course uh, which is going into my paid community, so the Midnight Music community, and QR code training is going to be part of that. I've got some bits and pieces of QR code training already in there, but I'm putting together this new course, which I'm tentatively calling the Music Tech Boot Camp Essential Skills for Music Teachers. It's a bit of a long title. I always have long titles for things, so I may, <laughs> may shorten it a little bit over time, come up with something a bit more succinct. But I think that, uh, well, essentially that's going to be a, a group of tutorial videos that will take you through some useful basic tech skills that I think are really essential for people to know um, and, and may be beneficial and they may not know they even exist yet. So this course will take you through all those great simple things that you can use in your classroom and apply them to the music scenario. In the second part of this two-part series, I'm going to talk about another method that you can use to make your displays interactive. So instead of QR codes, there's another method. And the second option involves creating images for your wall that actually come to life. It's a little bit like the moving pictures that you see in the newspapers in the Harry Potter movies. So if you've seen those movies, you'll know that when they open up the newspaper, if there's a picture of someone in the newspaper... It actually moves like it's a live video or a, like a live feed of that person. Really fabulous. So this method that I'm going to talk about in the next episode involves uh, that sort of thing where you've got moving pictures on a flat piece of paper. And it involves augmented reality, but it's not as complex as it sounds. I know probably when you hear augmented reality, it sounds really complex, but I'm going to share with you some really good examples that I found of music teachers who are using this technology and they're using it to show off student work. And I'll talk through the method for creating those two. As I said, it's not too hard. One of the other things that this technology is really useful is for flipping your classroom as such. So you can use this technology to kind of uh, get into the flipped classroom model. So I'm going to talk through all of that in the next episode. And once again, when that episode is published, I'll also give some uh, links to examples that are online and other information so that you can create your own. That's it for today's show. So if you'd like more help using technology, I'd love you to come and join me inside the Midnight Music community. If you'd like more information about the community and a special offer for podcast listeners, go to midnightmusic.com.au forward slash podcast offer. Music Tech Teacher Podcast is hosted by me, Katie Wardrobe. You can find more information and links from today's episode at midnightmusic.com.au forward slash 46. Thanks for listening and I'll see you next time.